Hi everyone. On October 29th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of Saint Serapion of Zarzma. Now Serapion was a Georgian saint who was born to a very wealthy aristocrat who was also known for his many, many good deeds and charity. Unfortunately, not long after the three sons were born, in which Serapion was the middle one and George the younger, it turns out that their mother died. And not long after this, their father died as well. Well, from an early age, Serapion was wanting to become a hermit, something we might think quite extraordinary these days, but in an Orthodox culture in the 10th century in Georgia, this was not all that uncommon. Well, Serapion had known about the existence of a certain Michael, who was a uh, presbyter of the monastery of Pariki, and he wanted to seek him out because this man was known to be someone very, very special, a true Gerundo, if ever there was one. And indeed, Serapion was successful in finding him and placing himself under his spiritual guidance, as did his younger brother, John. Well, it turns out that Michael certainly was clairvoyant in that he knew that Serapion was quite an exceptional young man. In fact, he recommended that he be ordained a priest. And this happened. But not long after that, Michael also said that, well, I think, because I have seen a vision, that you should go with your brother and found a monastery. And the founding of a monastery, or indeed of a church, was always considered a great and noble work and a very blessed event for the lives of the community in which the monastery or church was located, and especially for those that were involved in the founding. But Serapion was a little bit confused and unsteady about the idea because he was still young, and he wasn't sure if he could bear up under all the responsibilities of this. But being obedient, to get unto Michael, off he went. And they came to several different places. And one of them was at the very top of a high mountain. And they set about trying to construct a monastery there. But some of the locals were very much against this and ran them off. And so Serapion decided, well, maybe we should look to what Michael originally told us and try and locate that very spot that he had seen in a vision. And indeed, they were able to do this, although along the way they did encounter some more hostility. But they went through forests and brush and rivers and all kinds of things in order to get there and begin setting their life straight in the monastery. Well, at that time, the land that they happened to be on was belonging to a man named George. And George was, again, very wealthy, owned a lot of property, and he approached these two monks-to-be and very, very faithfully uh, asked for their blessing and was very encouraged by what they were doing because Serapion and John had also brought a wonder-working icon of the Transfiguration with them. George was very eager to venerate this icon, and that he did. He was so taken with them, in fact, that he made a bargain with them and said, well, look, I'm going to give you one day, and as far as you can walk in one day, I will give you all the land that you can cover. Well, the two brothers set out on this particular journey and were doing pretty well until they came upon some certain inhabitants of a local township. These inhabitants were very, very upset with what they're doing. They wanted nothing to do with any monastery or anything like that, and again, ran them out. Well, by God's grace, as it turned out, that very night, one of his miracles happened where a certain dam that was holding up a lake near this township, the rocks that were upholding it, burst asunder. The lake came down and flooded over this town. There were only two brothers in the entire town that survived. And this place today is known where Serapion ended up, Zarzma, based on the word Zari, 
which refers to some sort of devastation. They still weren't sure where to build exactly the monastery, though. So there was some, a little bit of disagreement about the place because Serapion had wanted to go someplace that it was very high and very cold. And, and his brother John said, well, wait, we really don't have anything at all to cover ourselves. Uh, perhaps that's not the best idea. Perhaps we should look for something else. And so there was a discussion between the two of them about what to do. So finally, Serapion said, well, we're going to take two oil lamps. We're going to fill them up. We're going to light them. You set yours in the place where you think we should go, and I will set mine in the place where I want to go. And they did so. And lo and behold, St. Serapion's burned down rather quickly. His brother John, however, his was still going after a full day. And so Serapion said, well, this is the place indeed where we should build this monastery. Their benefactor, George, was very kind to them uh, over the ensuing years, uh, offering them many gifts and as much assistance as he possibly could. And so St. Serapion uh, established the monastery with John and the two brothers that had escaped the devastation of the broken dam and the flooding of the lake. And after many years, St. Serapion, understanding that his end was near, blessed the abbacy of the monastery to go to that same George who had assisted them so often, and then he gave up his soul to God. The end of a very pious and peaceful and, although difficult in many respects, a life that was devoted to blessing God and following His will in all things. Georgia has produced many great saints just like this. And even though this occurred when uh, St. Serapion finally reposed around the year 900, just at the turn of the 10th century, it is something we should take into our hearts and to try and live as best we can with that same sort of devotion that these two brothers and their cohorts also shared. Bye-bye.